Scene 3.37 and a half. Hey y'all, Artist Poet Girl here and I'm going to be drawing a face. She will be cut out and adhered to a canvas. What is it like? Four by six or something like that? Yeah. I know you can't see the lines. And yes, the eraser is my friend. I really don't know what to say. Y'all seem to like these uh, voiceovers for some reason. I know it can't be the accent that I don't have. Yeah. So, she's smiling. Can you see her smile? I can see her smile. Hmm. She didn't have any eyeballs. They'll get in there sooner or later. This is really kind of a long video. It really took me, I don't know, like three hours, you know, drawing and erasing and painting and layering and painting and layering and stopping and going and get something to eat and stopping and petting the dog. Champ. I know. You guys have seen his pictures on the Twitters. He's a little cutie. I think he might end up being a big cutie, though. His feet are pretty big. There she goes. She's getting some eyes now. That one eye I just had the rough time with. It seems that that, that kind of happens to me, like one side of the face or the other, it just seems to just stay wonky. Yep, pretty much. Here, I'm putting in the eyes of her, uh, the whites of her eyes, the eyes of her eyes, ha <laughs> ha, the whites of her eyes. Um, for me, it helps keep uh, other colors from kind of darkening that up and here I am putting some uh, was that burnt sienna most likely adding in some dark parts on her hair first that's the first time I started with the, with the hair like that I'm getting better at hair still not great but I'm getting better my Johnny seems to think I do great, excellent, perfect even. That's what he says. He says, those lips are perfect. Your eyes are perfect. Of course, he's not talking about my drawing. <laughs> oh, I love that man. Yeah, this is my first face to be drawing and painting on camera and uh, I do get it off screen from time to time. I can use that excuse just as long as I want about getting stuff off screen. I can. I called it and so it is. And here I am adding some uh, recesses to her face which will be later on hopefully will appear to be set back in her face uh, in my opinion I kind of messed up her shirt not at this point way at the end but it came out okay yeah because it's already finished because this is a voiceover y'all my people my fans, those that love me, like to hear me talk. I really, I, I really just don't get that, because I say wonky words, and maybe that's why you just sit back and laugh and laugh and laugh at that hillbilly Texas girl. Mm-hmm. 
That's okay. I love y'all too. There's that heat gun, Paula. We miss you, Paula. That would be the journal artista. For those of you who may not be acquainted with her. Yeah. Heat gun. Lace eye. I'm putting some uh, Caucasian flesh tones. That's mostly what I paint. It's what I'm most familiar with. That is, to me, is a really pretty color for lips. The, the base, the bases of them, anyway. I think it's a zellia. Some people may call it salmon or salmon, depending on. Oh, did y'all hear that? Champ is crying. He's sleeping. He's sleeping. He's being a little crybaby in his sleep. He's so funny, chasing butterflies or lizards. He's, he really likes chasing the lizards around here. I know I totally dropped talking about that lip color. I think it is azalea. Let's see. It's right here. Oh, my bad. Summer blush. That's an Anita's paint. I do use a uh, quite a eclectic mix of uh, craft paints. Crafts, uh, what is it? Craft Smart, um, Apple Barrel, Let's see, what is this one? That one was Anita's. This one's Folk Art. Apple Barrel. Did I say that already? Um, let's look over here and see what else we got. That's an Apple Barrel. That's a plaid. It's the name of the paint maker, not the color paint. Really? How, how would you ever get a plaid paint? I mean, come on. What's that one Diddy like so much? I can't remember the name, but I have some of that somewhere too. Oh my goodness. I could just poke through here all day and probably never find it. Oh my goodness. Americana. Ta-da. There it is. Yeah. That's what I have. Um, yeah, I also have some uh, artist lofts, but I don't tend to use those for my faces so much when I'm painting on paper. And I do paint on a uh, heavy watercolor paper on the smoother side. I I I like it. You can use the textured side, but it tends to I don't know. For me, it's kind of weird. Smoother side still has a little bit of texture. Not much. I don't like it. I know I said it. I'm going to say it again. I like it. Hmm. So it's been hot here. It's summertime. We're now in the throes of August, the dog days of August. That has to do with um, how the. Um, I don't know, stars or in whatever star chart pattern that it is for the dog days of August. That's what that refers to. I actually did a postcard, uh, I guess maybe it's been two, three years ago, four maybe, of our youngest, our baby girl, getting a big old puppy kiss. I should tweet that. I should put that on Throwback Thursdays, too. Now that it is Dark Days of August. It is so cute. It is. Our baby girl's pretty. All of our girls are pretty. And our boys. They're all handsome, quite good-looking men. They all mans is now. Yes, they are. They don't stay babies long. Lisa, 
anyway, um, I go back and forth with my layers, adding lights and darks and lights and darks. And I use that um, Anita's brand of extender that uh, keeps your color of the paint, yet it gives it a, a really good translucent quality to build layers up with. I learned that from uh, Cat Can Paint. Thanks, Cat. That definitely improved my uh, my face painting. And yeah, I tend to only only draw and paint bust. You know, that would be from like the the bust up. Get it, bust. Yeah. That's what I'm thinking. I don't know. So it's hot. Did I mention it? We just had a cool front this past weekend. It actually uh, stayed in the uh, mid to upper 80s over the weekend. Very nice. If I were a coffee drinker, it would have been perfect mornings to drink coffee out on the breezeway. But as some of you know, coffee just doesn't set well with me anymore. It smells bad, tastes bad, I don't understand. It really has me terribly, terribly confused. Truly it does. I mean, I've been drinking it since I was 11 years old. Cereal since I was 11. That's been, you know, 12 years or something like that. <laughs> I am only 34 after all. So, uh, yeah. I kind of miss the coffee. I mean, I'm not quite sure what to what to do in the mornings anymore. I mean, you know, you get a cup of coffee and you sit down, you chillax with your coffee and think about your day and maybe make a list or something. Now I just drink water or tea. Sometimes I've had some hot tea because I started to to maybe replace that with you know, some, some hot tea in the mornings like Earl Grey or something and I thought, well maybe my body's just saying it doesn't want the caffeine anymore. So uh, Well you can't even see me painting her face right now, can you? I don't know what I'm doing because I can't see it either. So anyway I decided I didn't want to uh replace my caffeine with a new type of caffeine because maybe that's just what my body says. Nope, we don't want no more of it. And some foods are not tasting right either. I mean, something weird is going on in my taste buds. And my smeller vision too. Yeah, my smeller vision's off. It really is. It's kind of freaky, y'all. Kind of freaky. I hope you never go through it. I really do. <coughs> oh, sorry. Sorry, Charlie. I don't know. Is Charlie even watching? I don't know unless Charlie leaves a comment. I'm inside. It's not. It's not hot inside. I have the air conditioner turned off right now because it's really kind of loud out here in the studio. It's a it's a, a heat pump wall unit air conditioning thing that uh, we put in when, when we built the building. It just fits nice and snug right there in a hole in the wall. And uh, I know I'm not really telling you exactly what I'm doing when I'm painting on this uh, on this face. Y'all pretty smart. You can see it. Well, when I'm on screen, anyway, you can see it. Um, I took um, Jane Davenport's drawing, emotion, emotional drawing, 
I'm sorry, I don't remember the exact name of it. And um, when she did her eyes, she did the dark color on the background, you know, around the outside, because it's, oh no, don't go there. And the trailer park girls go around the outside, around the outside. <laughs> Anyway, you put the dark, or she put the dark, um, you know, for the irises. Typically around the edge, I seem to just paint it over the whole eyeball. Well, not the not the whites of the eye, of course. And I wanted this girl to have kind of a violet colored eyes, but they look a little creepy. So I went over them with some uh, sky blue. That helped. In the end, I, I like how her eyes came out. Might have had a little too many highlights on there. You know, that little white spark of, of life you put on the eyeballs. And yes, I like a big eyeballs on my faces. Drinking some water. Nice, cool water. Yep, I do. I like the uh, abnormally large eyeballs. I know they're on real life, in real life people, they don't look like that. My girls, my faces tend to be uh, somewhat of a fantasy. I've had uh, someone say, oh, you draw cartoons. And I'm like, sure. Sure, I draw cartoons. Cartoons were only faces and bust, you know. I have drawn some, uh, some bodies. They almost always have pancake hands. Pancake hands. They don't necessarily even have a thumb. That's why I say pancake hands. Y'all can picture that. If you haven't seen them already, you can imagine. Because you artists out there have some of the best imaginations ever. Like writers. Only a little different. Yeah. And for me, her chin just kept looking wonky and wonky. In the end, I think I kind of got it turned around. I'm putting a little more shading there next to her nose, trying to set that back and pop her nose up some. I like her little pale pink cheeks. My noses are way better than they used to be. Actually, my whole face is way better than it used to be. Yeah. I'm also doing uh, somewhere in this video. Uh, Barb Owen, I think she called it uh, chasing back the line, the paint line. So this kind of blurred, and not really a definite line, but it's there. And thank you, Barb Owen, for that tip. That that served me very well lately. It has, and that is a fluorescent neon pink. And I should have left her shirt that color. Yeah. Or when I add this next layer of uh, iris purple, I think it is. I like that color. It's so pretty. Um, heat gun. Follow. You'll note that at no time during this uh, video do I use that... Uh, bone folder. Well, what do you need? I wouldn't fold in paper. This would even work for her top. I don't think that's the iris. I think that's the lavender color. I don't know. I just like purple, y'all. I couldn't really make her eyes too purple because that just looks weird. But to me, it looked weird. I wasn't doing an alien face, you know. So, yeah. Her poor old top just kept getting darker and darker. I'm ha pretty happy with the way her hair came out. You'll see me working on that in a little bit again. Yeah, I'm trying to let it dry. And at one point, uh, I totally stopped filming and went to bed. I had to go to sleep, y'all. Now I'm going to add some uh, texture to her top. And 
it's kind of a cheesecloth looking uh, stamp textury thing and I did make the mask y'all didn't see me do that but I made a mask to you know keep me from stamping so much on her neck and stuff now I'm not real worried about the edges around her shoulders and her hair and stuff because I do plan on cutting her out and I did intend on that from the get-go here I am going around the outside edge again with that dark purple I think that's the iris purple hmm Of course, I could have just cut out uh, some scrapbook paper or something and stuck it on top. That would work too. Sometimes I'm just so hard headed about doing it. Here I am. That's black. Instead of using the dark burnt umber. Yeah, burnt umber. Yeah, the dark color. I used black and uh, had it pretty well thinned out with the uh, the extender. I really want that that inside part of her hair, which is, you know, actually the underneath part. I wanted it pretty dark. And I was adding some some more shadow around her face. Well you can see that. Some little spots inside. She looks better in the video than she did in real life at this stage. But she gets better. Well, I guess that's not really true. She looked pretty good in real life, too. Yeah. Yep. I might do a whole series of these on those little canvases like that. I'm toying with the idea. Toying. Toying. Not to be confused with La Toya. That's a person. Not to be confused with the Toyota. Do they even make Toyotas anymore? Because I know Nissan bought them out way back in the 80s when I was a mere child. Yes, I was a little child in the 80s. Hmm. Here's me trying to add some highlights. I still don't have that part out so well. There's her eyebrows. She's looking hot. Because it's August. Should put her in bathing suit because it's August. Somebody around here needs to wear a bathing suit. Yeah, I'm just working on that chin because I don't know. Not sure if I had her chin wonky or ended up making her lips wonky. Could have been a little of both. It was probably a little of both. Yeah, sometimes when you touch it to see if it's dry, that's not really the best idea. If you hold it up and kind of turn it around so you can see whether it's um, kind of shimmery, glossy, it's a pretty good idea. Because that extender makes it glossy. But I do like how that extender makes it uh, thin, translucent layers. I do. I like how I was able to get the, a pretty good shadow going there on her neck. I think this is about the point when I think I finally uh, felt okay with her chin. I know she's got kind of a longish chin. But you know, not everybody's got short ones. And I'm putting a little divot in there. I don't know what that, I don't remember what that thing is called. You know, we have like a little hole in your chin. At one point, John Travolta had one. He might still have one. I don't know. Don't really see it on girls, but for some reason, I wanted to her to have one. Yeah, looking good. 
kind of darkening up around the bottom parts of her nose there. And some more shadow for her where the hair kind of washes across. And there's the heat gun. Ooh, matte medium napkin time! Because I'm going to cover my uh, canvas board with this napkin. I like it! Yep. I'll put down plenty of matte medium. Make sure it's good and soppy wet. Lay your napkin down. I do just a uh, part at a time and put more matte medium on top. I'm taking the excess off the canvas because it's not going to absorb into the canvas board. I'm working around the little edge there and I eventually kind of fold it over. And here I've already cut my girl out and I heard recently that if you spritz the back of your paper that you're going to glue, if it's a heavy one like the watercolor paper there, uh, to spritz it with a bit of water and uh, put your glue. And you know what? I tell you what, that sucker really just sucked right up there when after I put that alien's glue on there. I had also put um, some gesso over the napkin on the canvas, and uh, it was a little too washed out, so I added um, some perfect pearls in the tangerine and biscotti, I think, the kind of white color. Yeah. Here's some letters. They're they're kind of a. It's not a thicker, but it's kind of like a thicker, thicker. And I had pre-painted them black because they weren't black, but I wanted them that color, so I painted them black. And I'm gluing those on with the uh, Aliens Tacky Glue. Gotta love, gotta love that stuff. And there she is. That's our finished face. Face. Face of face. So, yeah. That's, uh, that wraps it up. That was long enough hearing me droll on and on. Thanks so much for watching. And happy arting, y'all.